Let's take a look at this functions question and it is given to us by the question that a function is self-inverse if fx is equal to f inverse x and we are supposed to make use of this information that is given to us to try to show that f is a self-inverse function. So what we are going to do is to let y be equal to fx in order for us to use the same process to find f inverse, the expression for f inverse. So y is going to be equal to, according to the question, ax plus b over x minus a. Cross multiplying this, we will have uh, xy minus ay is equal to ax plus b. Our objective is to make x the subject so that whatever that is on the other side is going to give us an idea of how the expression for f inverse is going to be like. So let's bring this over to the left hand side. So xy minus ax, bring this over to the right hand side is ay plus b, making x the subject will be me first trying to factorize out x. So y minus a, this is equal to ay plus b. So x is equal to ay plus b over, this will be y minus a. This implies that the expression for f inverse x is going to be equal to, referencing to this, ax plus b over x minus a. So since now the expression for f inverse and the expression for f, they are exactly the same. So therefore, f according to the definition of self-inverse given to us by the question, f is a self-inverse function. So let me write it down here. f is self-inverse. We want to next state a geometrical relationship between y is equal to fx and y is equal to f inverse x. Hopefully you know this. It is they are symmetrical about the line y is equal to x, right? So I'm going to write down this. So y is equal to fx and y is equal to f inverse x. These are graphs that must be symmetrical about the line y is equal to x, okay? Then the next part of the question is telling us that there is this graph that is given to us. This is a graph that is representing the function g. And for the function g, we are also given that the domain are all real numbers. So information about the graph is given to us by the question already. We want to determine if gf exists. And in order for us to work on composite function, like what we have discussed before, it is very, very crucial for us to first work on the thinking framework more than the algebra. Okay, so let's make use of the same schematic to try to capture the idea of this composite function gf. So if I were to look at the composite function gf, x will first go into f, then goes into g. So if I were to use this schematic to help myself think about how the flow of the input which is x going into first f, then g. In order for this composite function to exist, the connection must be proper, right? So looking at this, we want to make sure that the range of f is going to be a subset of the domain of g. We want to make sure that everything that comes out from f, they must be all received, they must be received entirely by the function g. So let's try to prove this. The first thing that we will need is to find the range of f. And according to what that is given to me by the question, which fx is equal to an expression that is like this, there will be a horizontal asymptote. And the horizontal asymptote can be found by taking the coefficient of x divided by the coefficient of x. So the horizontal asymptote will be y is equal to a. And the vertical asymptote, referencing to the denominator of the expression for fx, is x is equal to a. Okay, but the question didn't really tell us whether a is positive or negative. So just to facilitate me at least being able to do a quick sketch of the graph of y is equal to fx, I'm going to just assume a to be positive number, okay? So with that being assumed, let me just try to do a quick sketch of the graph of y is equal to fx. So let's say we have something that is like this and let's say y is equal to a is here for the horizontal asymptote and for the vertical asymptote, assuming that it is something that is like this, x is equal to a. So the graph 
can be something that is like this. Okay, assuming that A is positive. Then the other side can be something that is like this. We also don't know whether B is positive or negative, so we won't really know whether this is on the positive y-axis side or the negative y-axis side. But it is okay, because based on this, with reference to A, we will be able to code the range of this uh, function f. So what is the range? The range of the function f, this is going to be from minus infinity all the way until A. It is all the y coordinates that is on this graph that will give us the range, right? So from minus infinity all the way until A, but not inclusive of A, or from A all the way until positive infinity. So this is the range of f. And for the domain of G, <laughs> this is the most receptive kind of domain. According to the question, the domain is going to be all real numbers. So it's going to be from minus infinity to infinity. This is definitely going to be received by G. Therefore, we can say that the composite function gf exists. Okay, last part. We want to then determine if it exists and it is existing. We want to determine the domain and the range of the composite function gf. I think the domain is pretty easy. The domain of the composite function gf is just simply going to be the same as the domain of the first function. Okay, so it is going to be the same as the domain of f. And the domain of f has already been given to us according to the question. It is all real numbers except a. So it is going to be from minus infinity to a, or from a all the way until infinity. Let's try to find out what is the range of this composite function. So to find the range of this composite function, we are going to try to analyze this last function here, g, okay? So we are going to take a look at g. Let me just try to sketch this again. So for the composite function gf, where the exit is from g, g as a function, the graph is already drawn to for us. Let me just try to redraw that graph again, because I'm going to make use of this graph to deduce the range of the composite function gf. So for this graph of g, there is a horizontal asymptote. This horizontal asymptote is y is equal to e. And for the domain of g, the domain of g, they are all real numbers. So from minus infinity all the way until infinity. Okay, so this is the domain of g, which will be giving us a graph that looks something like this. And we are given two points. One point is this a, c. The other point is this o, d. So this is the graph of y is equal to gx. This is given to us by the question. And now what we are seeing is what that is going to be going into g in this composite function here is going to be what that is going to be exiting f, right? So what that is going to be exiting f is going in. What that is going to be exiting f will be the range of f. So it is going to be this set of numbers that are going to be coming out from f. So we have this going into g. So all real numbers except a. Let's try to bring this into our graph. We are talking about the input to be all real numbers except a. a is here. The x-coordinate of this point is going to represent a that is on the x-axis. So here is like a bit like this. Okay, I'm going to use the black colored line to represent the input that is going to go into G when it is being connected to F in our composite function. So this is going to be the values that is going to be going into G, which means that the output of G, if I were to just draw this graph, okay, here is going to be a hollow dot. All these are going to be giving us output of the composite function, all this. Okay, so if I were to try to read the y coordinates of this graph, this will help me to deduce the range of the composite function GF. So what is the range? The range is going to be from 0 all the way until here, but not taking up the point of, not taking up the value of this point. If I were to reference to the y coordinate is c. So it's going to be from minus infinity all the way until c, but not inclusive of c. Then from c all the way until here, but not inclusive of e. So from c all the way until e. This is the range of the composite function gf.